They were TV's dynamic duo of the spy game, and their TV show became a band phenomenon, all beginning with this opening theme music. The Man from U.N.C.L.E., starring Robert Vaughn and David McCallum, took the big screen James Bond formula and added its own special blend of high spy adventure with an ample twist of tongue-in-cheek humor. I uh, hate to trouble you with trivia, but uh, I think I'm about to get killed. Goodbye. Well, actually, October 18th, 1965, we were the number one show right in the country beating out Bonanza, Bewitched, Dick Van Dyke. The Man from U.N.C.L.E. features Vaughn and McCallum as agents for an international law enforcement agency. My name is Napoleon Soto. I am Ilya Kuryakin. And both were dedicated to fighting a certain group of nasty international bad guys. And would that be Thrush? Who's Thrush? Thrush is an organization that believes the world should have a two-party system. The masters and the slaves. I elected to break each of the moral commandments and plan it in such a way that when I broke the last commandment, I would have a power base from which I could rule the world. From the very start, the man from Uncle was a fan favorite. My mom came to me and said, Danny, you have to see this show. I just saw it. It was the coolest thing in the world. I, I didn't know what a spy was, but I saw these dashing guys, you know, uh, running around in, in, in suits and having these gadgets, and there was cool music, and there were these beautiful, sexy women on it. That hooked me. I mean, that, like, changed everything that happened after in my life. Is it me that got himself tied up like a helpless child? No, it's you who blew up the wrong computer, though. What? Uh, the real one's right here in the house. The show not only sparked fan frenzy with its stories, but its stars also jump-started plenty of young girls' hearts. Yeah, David was pretty hot back then, and he kind of looked a little like what I wanted my boyfriend to look like. Kuryakin here, sir. Napoleon and I are following Alexander's limousine. We're approaching the interchange, heading for Washington, D.C. I tell my students, go home, walk up to your mother, and say, Ilya Kuryakin. And they come in the next day, and they say, my mother screamed at me. Oh, my God, I love Ilya. At one point, David and myself were receiving 70,000 fan letters a month, which was about 30,000 more than Clark Gable, who was the highest winner of the, of the <laughs> fan mail award at MGM. Well, Mr. Kuryakin, what have you found? A few minutes ago, the president's wife was almost killed with a thrush modified rifle. Yes, I remember being in the White House and being told by a Secret Service agent that the president will see you now, Mr. McCallum, which is always cool. And you go up those steps past all the bougainvillea and the Marines in their uniforms and everything. And as we're going along, the agent sort of whispered in my ear, he said, you're the reason I've got this job. <laughs> when the Beatles came to the United States in 1966, uh, one of their requests was to meet Robert Vaughn. At the peak of second season, the ratings, they had a 50 share which meant that 50% of all the TV sets that were on at that point in time were turned on to Uncle. The Man from Uncle's popularity was all the more phenomenal because it took place at the height of the Cold War, and one of the show's heroes was a spy from Russia. Well, I would imagine that our Russian friends are getting a trifle irked by now. We were in this arms race with the Soviets. Uh, we did indeed have a situation where Mr. Khrushchev banged his shoe and said, we will bury you and promised us that our children would grow up in a communist state. The idea that a Russian could be the star of an American television series is comparable today to, say, uh, an Iraqi being the star of a, of a major series. The Man from U.N.C.L.E. was also a merchandising gold mine. Long before Star Wars toys filled the shelves, Man From U.N.C.L.E. items were the must-have items for every kid. They were heavily merchandised. I probably had um, the trading cards, the little doll, the wallet, the sneakers, the sweatshirt. Probably had all of that at one point. Ah, yes. All guaranteed not only to protect you, but to arouse the interest of a teenage boy. They'll also appear transparently innocent to the casual observer. Ace paperbacks 
magazines. Lunch boxes, lunch pails, or whatever they're called. The Uncle Special Rifle, which came in a, a box the size of a tractor trailer. But in the end, it's the quality of the show itself that everyone remembers. It has never been out of the perimeter of, of my mind or my soul or my public life. People always talk about it. It was the best years of my life, so no, no question. It, it was a wonderful, wonderful time, going from Britain to America to Hollywood to everything that happened. It's got even better since.